fuck up. It's time to talk business. Jared Taylor, Matt Best, and Evan Hafer proudly present Blackhearted. Sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee Company and Arson Wade. Oh, we have a full house today. Uh, you know, somebody that's coming back with us too, TJ. You've you've done a Dream Bros with us, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't love you guys enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and that was a Dream Bros live too. And know, I don't I even drink, and I still do Dream Bros. Like, <laughs> what? With us in the house today is Mr. TJ Lavin, Mr. Trevor Jacob. What's happening? And Jr. Hey, buddy from from Wiener Schnitzel. That. that that's going to be a, a great story in itself. Like we have so many questions for that. Uh, let's start with you, Trevor. Give us, give us like the the two minute. Two minute of what? What are you looking for? Of you of you. Two minute of me. Uh, let's see. I've spent most of my life uh, in action sports, in and around watching guys like T T J. And uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I've spent most of my life as a professional snowboarder. Um, Represented USA in the Olympics in Sochi, Russia, at this last Winter Olympics. Holy cow! Um, so you're pretty good at it. I yeah. try. I try. What what, uh, what event for that? Uh, that yeah. well, there, I was there for border cross, which is motocross in the snow. You race yeah, down the course. So yeah. sick. Uh, it was actually that whole thing. Sean Palmer's a legend in yeah, that sport. Yeah, he's actually he come off the couch and smash fools. Yep, I absolutely. He was a uh, he was definitely like a mentor of mine in that whole range. But it actually came across. It's a long story that I could get into another time, but that whole process of racing border cross was kind of a like uh, a personal goal that was kind of a joke between me and a friend, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna kind of prove you wrong. But um, my whole life has been pretty much snowboarding and uh, competing in half pipe and slope style and that whole realm. But uh, on to other things, Nitro Circus. That's actually how I'm sitting here. I'm uh, followed Travis Pastrana around for the last few years and. Uh, yeah, have a lot of fun. Yeah, have a lot of fun. Yeah. Good times. And, and catfish is catfish yeah. on there too. You, you hanging out with catfish? No, no, I haven't. Oh, I haven't got to meet yeah. catfish yet. Oh, by the dude, way. I will introduce you today. He is <laughs> that guy is classic, bro. There is no. I'm excited because he is, Nate Wessel tells me so much about him because dude, catfish does the the bikes over Baghdad, doesn't he? Does he yeah, have dreadlocks yeah. now? Yes, he has dreadlocks because he's going through his midlife crisis. <laughs> And and I I was like midlife, bro. You're so closer to the end. It's not even funny. And he's like, no, no, I'm in midlife. And I was like, Dude. he's like, I might not make it through this weekend. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Oh, so boy. He, he's and he's TJ. Your role in this is pretty cool. You're gonna be on t NBC Live, correct? Yeah, apparently. I, you know what? I don't even know where it's showing. This, so who knows? It might be NBC. It might be internet. Who knows? But uh, whatever it is, I'll be in the booth for the BMX contest. I'm really excited for that. But these guys are just a whole different level of, of awesome. So yeah, yeah. I'm. This is going to be my first time seeing freestyle motocross in person. Oh, you're in for a fucking trip. Yeah, you are going to trip out. There's no doubt about it, dude. I it's can't um, wait. it's the crazy. I was telling Shannon earlier in the car that if there's one action sport that is like that is probably like the the most likely to either succeed or die it would have to be motocross but it's so safe um as far as where the progression's going but i mean it's like bmx and and moto but moto you have the ability to go so much higher and so yeah, much farther, farther that it's like uh, yeah uh, if there was one i was saying if there's one event that i would be most afraid to enter today which is at the Nitro Games, and it we're would only going to get motocross. we're only going to get lighter as we as more technology as they start kind of make breaking these things down to make a lighter bike. You know, Those what electric are the, yeah. bikes are coming is, in hot. Is that the new one? Yeah, the electric bikes. Those things are crazy. Oh god, yeah. instant Dude, torque. Oh yeah, they're fat. They're they're ridiculous. All right, well, Jr., we're on to you. On to me. Yeah, yeah. Give us the give us the down and dirty. You want my background? My yep, bio? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. <laughs> uh, grew up in action sports. Traveled around, competed in snowboarding for a while, got a little too hurt, too many head injuries, quit that, decided I needed another avenue. Um, my family was in the restaurant business. Dad started Wiener Schnitzel, so I fell into the family business, worked my way up, started out uh, actually cooking fries and serving food at a restaurant, moved up through the company, and then came into a leadership role. I'm now vice president of Wiener Schnitzel. That is awesome. Wow. And you know how excited I am because... 
I'm Lord Hot Dog. You are the Wiener King. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love hot dogs. <laughs> I do too. And I, I mean, I you're Lord. I'm King. You're King you know Hot saying? Dog. Yeah. So that's, it, we've joined forces. I, I get to it. tell people I slang Wiener for money, that, so that's my favorite part. That's, that's, that's an amazing man. thing. I don't have yeah. enough Wiener to slang. <laughs> 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 so so, TJ, you just you just came back from Colombia. Let's yeah, cocaine eat. and coffee. Yeah, <laughs> we know a lot about uh, one of those. Uh huh. <laughs> Coffee's good too. How was it? You said you fell in love with the country. What, how was it down there? You yeah, guys were filming. Uh, I was in I was in Cartagena, and we were filming my show. Twentieth season. Yeah, it was my twentieth season. And um, and I was like, man, you're like South Park. Yeah, it just doesn't go away. <laughs> and Simpsons. So it's like it's crazy because when I first got there, it it, it was there's a lot of of impoverished people there mm -hmm. and and i it was third world some of it and i was like man it's sad you know because we're right on the coast and the city's so cool and i was a little bit taken back by it but then i slowly started falling in love with it why because the people the people were so sweet and so nice that everywhere we went they were just so like endearing and i was like man i really love this place Wow. Because the people, like, they, it didn't matter that they didn't have anything. Like, there's this thing called a basuto. It, it's like the, the farmer's market kind of. And it's very run down and very dirty and very, like, dingy. And it's kind of creepy. And there's super hot and, like, sweaty as hell. And it's just crazy. But you're going through there and the people are so sweet. You're like, man, like, these, these people are just awesome people. And it just made me fall in love with the place. And like the walled city of Cartagena, it's like 400 years old, this wall. And they, they, they put it up to keep the pirates out and keep the good people in. And I was like, man, that is something that I really endear. And I really love those people. So the place was just very interesting, very cool. Filming went smoothly? Very Yes, the filming went awesome. Um, a little bit difficult with the roads and stuff sometimes because there's a lot of construction. But... But the filming was awesome. I think it's going to be the best season that we've ever had. And, uh, and yeah, I, I just was really I'm excited for back. it. I was catching all your live feeds while you were down there. Oh, uh, yeah? They were oh, sick. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it was fun. I mean, girl was singing Despacito. A little kid was singing that. Like, I, I was, I was, I'm, into the, I'm into the culture, man. I love, I love the Spanish. I love Spanish speaking. I love everything about it. I'm just like, man. You're gonna I move am down there. that guy. Yeah, man. I'm kind of thinking about it. Sounds like he's got a future in yeah, South America. Sounds like you want, yeah. you want no, more. There's no doubt in my mind I will be there someday. Just the dirty old man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you have you have something new starting up. Uh, tell us about that. New new podcast? Yeah, I'm starting a little podcast with, with Forrest Griffin. We're ca it's called Anything Goes with me and Forrest Griffin. And uh we have a studio much like the one we're sitting in right now. It's I not love your quite studio. as sick as this. Well, no, you know, I took a little bit off of yours because the walls and yours is what kind of, you know, influenced this. Yeah. I like it, yeah. man. I like it. Well, it's 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 badass and and I love it and I think it's really cool that that we're able to do this in this day and age that we're able to just build a show and just make it happen and that's kind of what we're doing and and so we will definitely have all three of you guys on the show. That'd be awesome. And and anything goes. Yeah, anything yeah. goes. It's just basically come on there and just tell us about whatever you want. That's awesome. When 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 is your planned launch date? Just next Friday. Next Not Friday. this Friday coming up, but the next one after. All right. That. So this this show will go live Tuesday morning. So make sure you you search it up on Friday. Anything goes with TJ Lavin and Forrest Griffin. Get ready for it. <laughs> All right, Trevor. Let's talk about making money in action sports. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> I, I might not be the right one to ask that question. <laughs> and 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 the business side of that, you know how TJ who, just let me look at who was like, handling that in the very to... beginning? Because you started at what fourteen? Um, well, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the future. You know, like I, I don't know the future of action sports, but I definitely know the past. Yeah. And. <clears throat> I got, I got, I mean, personally, I got really lucky uh, in my personal situation. And if you want to talk about money, then that's a whole other deal. But as far as action sports and money, um, I, I was born into it. I was born into snowboarding. Um, my parents had me pretty much on a snowboard before I knew how to walk. Like I, I, and I, I just, it was just what they were doing. So they wanted to bring my brother and I along and 
there you go we're you know we're yeah. three years old on the slopes and uh so you know i just didn't know anything else but to start entering the local contests and and doing the the whole you know local competing and i, I you know i'm just competitive by nature but um uh, let's see it at uh, nine years old, I entered my first contest and I got first place. I was super stoked. And uh, but I, it was just like a little event. And then going forward, I got, like I said, really lucky in the fact that um, I was snowboarding every single day. I would go. I went to the public school in Mammoth Lakes, California, and every day when school would get out at two thirty, sometimes two forty-five. I would go to the mountain for an hour. It closed at four, so I would every single day. It was the, the you know the conditions are just horrible. The pipes all the half pipes all rutted out. The jumps are just just there's no one there's no one snowboarding. There's like maybe two people in the park, but I would just lap this thing every day. And then finally, <laughs> finally one day, I did a whole year of that in uh, elementary school, and I begged my parents to let me try homeschool. Like please, I just want to snowboard. I'll do all my homework. I promise. I promise. And. Um, <laughs> That's a whole other story of <laughs> how I enjoyed school <laughs> at that point in my life. But uh, so then I started working from 6 a.m. to noon, um, doing my schoolwork, and then I got to go to the mountain from noon to four. So I'd start riding, you know, four hours a day instead of one, and that was a super exciting point because I, you know, I was just progressing at a big level. And then uh, this is another whole thing, but I got, uh, I got uh, invited. Well. I basically got I, I convinced my dad to bring me to um, to the U.S. Open, which was the biggest event, questionably at the time, for snowboarding. Like if you're a if you you know X Games is big, but if you're like a, a niche snowboarder, if you if your life is snowboarding, then the U.S. Open is bigger than at that point was bigger than X Games. And so at 13 years old, I went out there and my dad entered me in this lottery to do the the big event, like with you know the big guys, Sean White, Danny Cass, all you know Kevin Pierce, all like the big guys that would compete in this main event. I'm 13 years old. I was going there for the Junior Jam, which is a 13 and under event. And it was just kind of like on the side, like, you know, hey, let's let these kids do their thing. Um, my dad entered me in this lottery to be able to compete. They gave away like a couple spots for the big event, but there were six qualifiers. So you had a pre-qualifier, a qualifier, like a semi-qualifier, a semi-final, and a final. So you had to make it through all these. They started with like, you know, 500 people and it would come down to 15. And so I made it through the first round at 13. I'll keep in mind, my whole life was just lapping a fucking chairlift with a half pipe. And uh, <laughs> so I went out there. I'd never really known like, well, you know, come, like you really, really tested myself against these guys. So I made it through the first round. Next thing I know, I make it through the, the next round make it through the next round and like people are like who the fuck is this guy like what what is happening and i was just having fun i i didn't have any expectations i was just getting trying to get extra practice basically for <laughs> my little event and so the fourth round out of six comes out so let's say the qualifier and then the next round is the semi-final and then the final so in the qualifier i was i, I rode great i was one spot out of the semi-final i Damn. missed it i missed it by one and I was like, that was whatever. Like I got like so much practice. I was stoked. The day of the event, my dad gets a call on his phone because he's you know we're, we're it's just him and I there. Like yeah. I'm 13 years old, and hey, so and so is hurt. You're you're in, you're you're in the semifinal. So that like so lucky. <laughs> 13 years old, show up on the game day of like the, the biggest event in snowboarding, and I'm like 13 years old going, what the fuck is happening? There's thousands of people lining this half pipe. I mean, if any of you guys that are listening have ever watched, you know, X Games or, or something like that, you know, there's thousands of people. I'd never, ever experienced this in my life. Like, I, I, I'm a 13-year-old <laughs> kid that just rode the local hill up and down. And next thing you know, I'm like, at this semifinal where I think there's like 25 people and uh, that are competing. And and so, anyway, I'm not trying to sound take too long here, but... Um, Not cool. It's, your, it's cool, bro. Fun. Take your time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment. <laughs> I am too, dude. I'm, I'm feeling standing it. Standing on that half pipe. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so, I, so we are. I too am standing. I might be at the bottom of the half pipe. <laughs> Knocked so, out. So I'm sitting. There, I'm standing there, like you know, as nervous as a 13 year old could possibly be, um, and I'm just you know standing next to all of my you know heroes of snowboarding, just sitting there, and all these guys are competing. So. The semifinals, everyone has to compete in, but the top 15 move on to the final, which is like the top three runs, you know, winner yeah. takes like, you know, 
the the prize, which is you know probably like a hundred grand or something. I don't know. I didn't I didn't care. A hundred grand. I, what was it? Maybe twenty. A hundred thousand dollars. Probably between fifty and twenty grand. Yeah. Like Whatever, okay. dude. T anything over five, and you're laughing. Yeah. So so uh, anyway, thirteen. Th these no no no. no so, so Jesus here, Christ. Yeah, hear me out. Hear me out. So these guys are. I I didn't even know what really like money was. It was you know. I, I, so um, that that's kind of irrelevant for this story, but these, you know, I'm just kind of putting this event into perspective. It's the biggest snowboarding event in, in you know, ever. So I do my runs, and I'm like, this is cool. Like, I'll never make the finals. This is. I remember I've. I remember at 13 going, I'll never make the finals, but like it's whatever. I get two runs, and like you know, the best dudes in the world, and here we are. And so. I take the runs and I'm all stoked, you know, super stoked. I'm like probably just gonna take my snowboard off and, and just watch the rest of the day. And I'll never forget my friend Matt Ladley was sitting there watching and he's like, "Dude, you made it, you made it." <laughs> and, I, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, I, like you know, we we're punk kids at 13 years old. I was like, "Shut the fuck up!" Like, at the, you know, and and so then I look up at the screen and I like qualified in like you know 11th out of 15 or something like that. And I was like, "Holy shit, I so made boom, it!" Now you're final. I made it. So not to not to be an egotistical asshole that sounds full of himself, but I'm kind of proud of myself for this because it's one of the only accomplishments that I think I really stand with. <laughs> like, dude, fig you're not figuratively. egotistical. Like, that's uh, awesome. So, so uh, it's badass. To this day, I'm the youngest person to ever enter to ever m be in a final of a U.S. Open. And to make a long story short, to make a long story longer, to make yeah. a long story longer, <laughs> <laughs> Travisism. I'm yeah, exactly. Long kidding. story long. I love it. I love it. Doesn't matter. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Now keep that it real. event was uh, basically watched by everyone in the snowboard world. And after that event was over, um, I got approached. This was 2007. So there was a lot of money in action sports. And I was 13 years old. Sean White, I got to give him a lot of credit. He called his agent, and I didn't know this at the time, and said, uh, Get your hands on this kid. And so basically they did. And every company that wanted their hands in action sports got their hands on me and I'm this 13 year old fucking kid that just likes snowboarding his local hill and all of a sudden I got Oakley and Nike and Sobe and all these big brands at the time just throwing all this money at me but I didn't even know what it meant my dad was handling it for me 13 <laughs> years old and uh, I just wanted to keep having fun but I could see all these agents and all these different people getting involved and all this stuff and, and I, I just lost I just I just went crazy like I, I I was so stressed out over the next couple of years and um, and just kind of stopped competing in half pipe. So to make a long story even longer, when I went to do the whole Olympic thing, um, that was just kind of a, a personal challenge that I set for myself. It's like, hey, you know, I, I had kind of quit snowboarding at the time, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and, and pursue that, and, and which I did. And I'm anyway, I'm kind of done talking now, but uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but no, so that was only like you know, I mean, that was uh, he's 17 now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 20, 23 now, so that was what? Uh, 23. These shoes are 23, bro. <laughs> no, you say 2007. I'm like, I'm in Baghdad in 2007. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway. Well, but now to wrap it, wrap so, yeah, it all up. So, uh, yeah, that went to nothing about action sports money, but. Uh, that was a good story. It was a fucking. I love it. I love this story. I think you're, I think you're on I a love great track story. now, you know, doing, doing your video producing, I learning editing it. and everything like that. I mean, this is the future. Like brands like like ours want want the full package like not you know it's 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 great to get a guy that's good at something but if he requires a camera team every time he goes out that's kind of expensive yeah that's bullshit when you have that all wrapped in one it's like okay yes yeah i want to i want to i want to sponsor him yep, or put money yeah. behind him hey i mean he, it's all it's if 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 anyone out there's like wondering you know needing to find a passion or something like that i i'm such a strong believer in intrinsic drive you know doing something that you truly believe in and not doing it for any external rewards you know you gotta you gotta really have a passion and and believe in what you're doing for something so much deeper down than um you know a money a money or a reward you know that's something that you're seeking of course you need goals but you know, in my opinion, you just need something that you're really going to wake up and be fired up about, regardless of if there was any rewards for it. You got to be lost in the process. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I'd, that's kind of my film history too. You know, I, I I worked for free for almost seven years, <laughs> but it was practice for yep, me. Totally. Um, so, y you were in the snowboard world. 
yeah, as well? Yeah, as, as a kid. I grew up in Colorado, okay. just outside of Aspen. I was on the Aspen snowboard team, did the whole USASA, like amateur kid yeah. circuit. And then, the uh, ghettos of Aspen. What was ghettos, your, yeah, it's hard out there, man. What was, <laughs> your, <laughs> what was your focus? Were, were you pipe or were you... Uh, I was pipe and park. Nice. Yeah. But oh, cool. um, 17 had a really bad head injury, and that just kind of... Really? They're like, you'll never snowboard again. And I was like, Ooh. well, I'm going to interpret that loosely. <laughs> were you wearing a helmet? Uh, yeah. Well, I actually got a head injury from fighting. So <laughs> I wasn't a wearing a story. helmet during that time. No, 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 no. That's the worst. Yeah. But that was just like the cherry on top of a big old pile of head injuries and that's and that's when you started uh moving into restaurant yeah well moved into music and then what'd you do in music uh so i went to music school and ma minored in piano majored in music business started a concert promotion company called souls in action entertainment with a partner um she runs it full time it's basically it, i'm so out of it now i don't yeah. have anything to do with it but it still puts on like four shows a week in denver oh that's awesome uh, yeah and then i was a hip-hop tour manager for a while in la and i just man i woke up on the floor of like an apartment in new york i was sleeping on a wood floor and there's a dead rat under the stove and i just thought to myself like i can do better than this <laughs> <laughs> and so quit being a tour manager for underground hip-hop because there's no money in that yeah and uh got involved in the family business, which I'd already been working in. Like every summer I was working in the family business. And so just got more involved in there and worked my way up. Saw that there was kind of a misdirection in marketing. Yep. Um, we were losing customers. Our average age of our customer was 48, which is, you know, we got to capture a younger no, demographic yeah. at this point. So I'm a millennial. That's what every brand seems to have a hard on for. So I was like, all right, what do I like? And yes. just kind of like and, detour. And, and how long expand. ago was that when you when you took when you started driving the image ship? So that would have been probably like three years ago. Yeah, because there's been a big image flip. There has, yeah, absolutely. So, so what 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 have you seen since since you said, hey, here's the direction we need to move? So I can't really give full credit to any specific aspect of marketing or maybe it's restaurant operations or some there's something good happening in wiener stencils so if you look at the fast food industry as a whole last year and up to this point this year everybody is down they have negative trending sales and negative transactions we're up about five percent and have positive transactions so something's working i don't know what it is it might be our involvement in action sports or like a well, I, I think a lot of these know. big brands are so risk adverse now, the marketing that they do has just become mundane. Yeah. Like, and, and again, like there is in, in that marketing world, there is, you, you've still got these dinosaurs that are, that are using 1990s, you know, TV ad style, you know, print ad styles and things like that, that are just like, get over it. Like yeah. you have to create, you have to create content. You have to create a viral, a viral fucking frenzy. Like absolutely, and, and I'm honestly kind of just taking a page out of the energy drink playbook. You know, mm -hmm. like they created a culture, not a product, right? So mm -hmm. like their brand image and culture is what drives their sales. Um, like if you look at Red Bull, they're a marketing company that happens yeah, exactly. to sell a product. Yeah. So just kind of trying to create too, a brand culture is. Our focus. At you this guys, point. as a as a fast food establishment, have something different than anybody else has. Like it's not it's not a Burger King, McDonald's, Jack in the Box. Like you you have a different menu. Yeah, <laughs> Very we few. honestly don't it's not, consider anybody in the industry a direct competitor because they're not. They're not. Yeah, like, we are the world's largest hot dog chain and basically the only one that I worry about. And, and you guys <laughs> all wonder why this is one of my greatest friends. <laughs> hot dogs, hot dogs. We are <laughs> found. <laughs> so uh, what are, what, what's something that, uh, a big lesson that you learned, like right, right as you started, you know, three years ago when you started pushing forward, what was, what was a tipping point for you that was like either, either, oh shit, that didn't work or, oh shit, this is working. So um, there's a, I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes, but luckily I have a very forgiving franchise community and a very forgiving corporate community. Um, but yeah, it, it was very difficult in the beginning to get everybody to understand why we're going to spend money doing these things. They're like, I don't see why sponsoring a Supercross team is going to translate into selling hot dogs. 
It's like, well. Who, who's saying that, though? It's like, a, you, well, you you're like, understand. Most how, of our, how do you like, get a 12-year-old to look at your brand? Yeah. Well, most <laughs> of our franchisees didn't know what Supercross was till we sponsored a team, you know? Yeah. So it's like, they don't understand. But then we did a little research and realized that 33% of Supercross fans eat fast food over three times a week. So it's like, well, that just justified the sponsorship circumstance. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> and That's crazy. Have, Isn't that and, crazy? And when you have a tour, touring pieces, yeah. you can, you, you, you then you know give something back to your franchisees when you come when you come to a location that has four or five of your stores in the city and your team is there yeah well guess what now they have free marketing you know with with athletes that are going to show up at the stores and things like like that 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 ledge of thinking as right when you tell me i i'm going okay age demographic location specific you know giving back marketing marketing structures that are already paid for to the franchisee to make them happy. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the most fun things we did that ha you could just track direct impact was um, I've done two years in a row a Hot Dogs for Homeless tour, which is me and uh, Dingo and Mike Smith, a bunch of people get into a tour bus, travel around uh, basically like five, six different states in the West Southwest and just feed homeless people hot dogs, hand out product to kids, like talk to kids about giving back in their community. And I just tracked every stop we were at, I would track sales after we were there and after we left. And every market we hit had a sales spike. And that's, I mean, it's, that wasn't the intention, but it's an indirect marketing platform, basically. It's yeah. just guerrilla marketing. I'm driving yeah, exactly. around and, doing good to do and, good. And the cost, and just, the cost the to benefit. Afterwards. What, yeah. the, 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 that cost is, is nothing. Yeah. You know, that, you can do three states for five grand. <laughs> oh, it, on, yeah, it's gas, basically, because yeah. you're eating hot dogs. Which, it, which, you know, and you guys like, have your own brand of hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was eating, like, man, four or five hot dogs but a day. Now, a now you're speaking so language. Good. Now so good. Now you're speaking <laughs> my language. Yeah. That's you all? Know, you, know yeah. I'm all, you know I could always go for a double dogger. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about, but I'm down. <laughs> No, a little bit is, of this. Yeah. <laughs> no, there this you is go. Awesome. It it, it is. It, it. I I think, I think big corporate is still about three years behind. Before, uh, you know, they've all been ignoring Facebook. They don't uh, because they're hundred percent. Their marketing directors are are dinosaurs. Everyone's old school. Yeah, that's why. Like, if if there's if you guys have young listeners, if if you can figure out a way to tap into the old school brands of you know like i'm talking massive brands i'm talking Pepsi, I'm, I'm talking Coke. i'm talking the people that <clears throat> yeah exactly but i'm talking like you know uh some f some law firm that you know doesn't <laughs> just like if you can tap into like you know people with big dollars but need marketing help and you're a new school dude like and you're willing to hit the pavement and and willing to you're ex succeed fast. express the the you know the marketing that these people can have to progress into the future because that's where it's all going it's all everything's going online and if you can tap into hey I'll, you content know, yeah exactly going to content. pay me to you know do this you know facebook's and instagrams and all that then you're going to be doing good one big thing i want to, like again your franchisees at this point have to be happy because Wiener Schnitzel is showing up on a regular basis in their kids' Instagram feeds. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them get it, some of them don't, like I said. But you can't argue with numbers. Yeah. This year... When everybody's down and we're up, like, let me keep going. Not only are we up, but it has been the most profitable year in company history. And we've been around since 1960. That is freaking awesome, so like, man. Nice work. Working. Congratulations. Yeah. Nice that is, work. Yeah. That is cool. Damn. That's great. Incredible. It's great. When you How's come that? in... With, when you come in, how's that no for idea. a statement? Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, you, just, hey, you can't. Uh, you casual. Can, you just been even leaving that one behind. I got you. Action Sports. <laughs> what? Dude, I've been trying to say that for years for Action Sports. Like, <laughs> I got your Action Sports right here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Love you it. Just, you can Good not for you. understand it, but you can't argue with it. Good you know? for you, well, man. Numbers you know, don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Uh, I love it. I know. Good you know, for you. I'm going to introduce hey. you to our partners. Hopefully tomorrow morning. Um, just because you know we're gonna lean on you for franchise advice because no, we don't absolutely. know. I'm you here know, for you. We're trying to figure it out right now, uh, and that's that's the future of Black Rifle Coffee. I'll give you Beautiful. franchise advice. You just give me stuff to keep me awake, man. Done, done. <laughs> it's a it's a symbiotic. 
I'm talking about the coffee, not the cocaine. Oh, yeah, No, yeah, yeah. there's no such thing as co cocaine in this building. That's true. <laughs> All I was those talking bags about are full of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> they just you, say Columbia. We need a Colombian import. We need yeah. to get you refilled with coffee. Up yes, there. I do need some. I need some. <laughs> and then, you know, my... my uh, my class would like some of that. Too. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. dude, you know what? I don't want to talk about that, but I yeah, yeah, just yeah. want you to know. We're not, we're not they leaking want that it. out yet. They but, want it. Yeah. But, we're not leaking me, it, but damn it, the, they uh, want the coffee. You, you got to give me the address to them so I send a massive box with your name on it. <laughs> 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 no, let's not do that. That's too, no, that's too gnarly. <laughs> but you can send some to me and I'll just bring it <laughs> All in right. for a very perfect. nonchalant. Well, hey, uh, for TJ Lavin, Trevor Jacobs, JR, and Wiener Schnitzel, this is Blackhearted. Thanks you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Black Rifle Coffee Company, along with Parson Wave, would like to thank you for tuning in to Blackhearted. Have a great fucking day. You can find today's guests on Instagram at TJLavin, at Trevor.Jacob, and at JRGillardi.